Hey everybody, my name's Patrick, and in this short tech tip video, I'm gonna provide a quick overview on how to get started with Vertigis Studio Workflow. Let's dive in. All right, so to get started with Vertigis Studio Workflow, we're first gonna to navigate to this apps.vertigisstudio.com landing page. And this is where you can access the rest of our web-based designers as well, but we're gonna be focusing on workflow today. Um, and so to get started, you can go ahead and actually click this launch button here. And this is going to take you to our SaaS or Vertigis Cloud environment, where you can then log in with ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise to get access to the web-based designer and start designing custom widgets for your web app builder and Vertigis Studio applications. Um, it's worth mentioning though, if we jump back here, um, there is this download link at the bottom. So you can also download these web-based designers on, and host them on your internal web server, whether that's hosted in AWS or Azure as well. It's a short five to 15 minute installation process to get started and within that process you'll be authenticating your product with ArcGIS Online or, or ArcGIS Enterprise. So here let's jump back to our SaaS environment and go ahead and log in with ArcGIS Online. And there you can actually see it single signed me on with my ArcGIS Online identity. So we can see here I'm logged in and I am now brought to this interface where I can design a new workflow or I could open up a previous or last modified workflow as well. Um, to get started, uh, you can kind of choose the you know, WebGIS or mobile GIS application that you're planning to build your workflow for. Um, we can go ahead and maybe select Web App Builder here. And once you've selected a particular product that you're designing your workflow for, um, you're then brought, brought to this kind of web-based interface where you have this empty design canvas where you can start building your custom widgets um, for your particular business processes. Now, how you build your widgets is done by using this toolbox here to drag and drop this library of activities for doing different operations. So here you can see I've got a large uh, number of activities that I've added to my workflow designer. By default, you might get, I don't know, 150 to 200 activities or so. Um, and in here, I've got a list that ranges from more programming based activities like doing for each loops to if statements to manage branching in your workflows to more GIS operations like doing buffers or querying layers or running geoprocessing tasks. And the idea is you can just drag an activity onto the design surface and it'll immediately get connected with the start control here. Um, and then you can continue to drag and drop other activities to connect them to design your logic and, and, and build a workflow. So maybe we want to do a buffer and then we might want to query some features within that buffer. Um, so you can see here as I dragged and dropped that activity onto this particular one, it automatically connected it. You can also delete activities using your uh, keyboard, delete key. Um, you can also um, add activities as well by um, choosing any of these connection points. So I can also automatically add this to the left of this particular activity, or I could add it um, underneath it. And by default, um, if you just drag it on top, it'll again make that connection and you can continue to move these activities around or use your uh, arrow keys to uh, move them around as well. Um, additionally, just while we're in the design area, it's worth mentioning we also support undo uh, and redo. Um, and you can also zoom in and out of your workflows. And if for whatever reason, if you get lost, um, let's say, you know, I'm down in this bottom left corner and I don't see my activities, I can click the home panel or home uh, key uh, on my keyboard and it'll take me to the start of my workflow here. Um, additionally, we do support uh, copying and pasting activities as well. So you can uh, right click an activity, you can cut it or copy it and right click and click paste. And again, you'll wanna connect it to the activity above it if you want that logic to fire. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete some of these and also uh, mention another great resource if you wanna get started is if you go to file and click new you're going to see here we actually have some samples to kind of get you up and up and running. Uh, you can start from scratch using this blank workflow. Um, you can also go ahead and select this cascading drop down one, uh, which I'll just use for example. And here this will preload a workflow. 
Now, in this scenario, we've actually added um, an activity, probably one of the most common activities that most workflows have, called a display form activity. And again, you can search for that using the toolbox here to go ahead and find it. And all of our activities are also going to have help associated with them. So you can go ahead and click more to learn more about that activity and what the inputs are and so on and get access to our documentation center where you can learn about key concepts and what's new and you know, the requirements for leveraging workflow and so on as well. Now, if we jump back to our, our workflow here, we can see we have a display form. And if I double click, the display form. We can see here we're now inside of a form and we've designed our form to have some cascading drop downs. So here we have a drop downs that's going to be populated with uh, the different states within the United States. And then based on the state that you select, we'll then filter and display the counties within that state. Now it's again worth mentioning that like the activities, you can drag and drop different form elements within here. So if we wanted to include, I don't know, a number range slider, I could drag and drop it. And you can place these activities side by side, or you can place them one on top of a, a, another. You can include other elements here, like file pickers, and date range pickers, and, um, check boxes, and so on as well. Um, to delete these form elements as well, it's uh, similar. You can use the delete key on your keyboard, or you can uh, just go ahead and select this little context menu and click delete. So here we've just created a, a sample form and we'll get into uh, later in the, the following videos on how to customize these forms. But basically here, uh, each form element is gonna have some properties associated with it that you can then customize and, and tailor. Um, and when you're happy with your workflow, let's go ahead and save it. So I'll go file, save or save as. Um, and, or control S on your keyboard. And I'm gonna give this a name, tech tip videos, I don't know, hello world. Click save. And you'll see here at the top, we now have an item ID. And that's because we're actually storing this workflow as an item back inside of my ArcGIS organizational content. So if we jump to the info tab here, you can actually see we actually now have this URL here. I can go ahead and click view. And this is pointing to that same item in ArcGIS Online. So we're actually storing this workflow as an item in ArcGIS Online. It doesn't consume any credits. In the back end, it's just a, a very lightweight uh, JSON file. And by default, it's only going to be shared with the user who built the workflow, but you can go ahead and uh, choose your, your sharing methods, the same method as you would with uh, a web map, for example. So we now have a workflow living in ArcGIS Online. Let's jump back to our designer. Uh, and you'll see here, there's this run in sandbox option. So let's go ahead and launch that. And before we even add this to Web App Builder or a Vertigest Studio WebGIS or Mobile GIS product, um, we can go ahead and actually run this workflow in action. So here I'm going to select this option to run my workflow. And you can see here I now have a form that's getting populated with all the different um, states in the United States. So let's select California. And then here this is going to now filter and show me all of the different counties within California. So here we can see there's LA. If I select a different state, maybe Hawaii, we're going to see we're now filtering and showing just the counties within Hawaii and so on. So again, you can continue to modify your, your, your workflows back in the designer and then test them in the sandbox to start to get a feel for how to design and build workflows. Um, so hopefully that gave you a brief introduction to how to log into the web-based designer, create your first workflow and save it. And then in the next few videos, we're going to go a little bit deeper into how to actually extract that information from those forms and query layers and so on as well. Bye for now. Never miss the Vertigis Studio Tech Tip. Like and subscribe below. And as always, you can learn more by visiting vertigis.com.